Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Got an absolute banger of a match for you today. As the allies, we have number five ranked Orange Pest playing the Brits up against the number one ranked DAC player, Ray. These players don't need an introduction and honestly, neither should my co-caster, Stealth Elf. That's it, this is a long one. Hang in there, uh, right onto the match. Hell yeah, all right, we're here. We got Orange Pest in blue. He's on the east side of the map, but at the top of the screen because that's how the map was designed. Playing the Brits and immediately going armored and three sappers. Well, we know what kind of game this is going to be. And then opposite Jeez. him, <laughs> we got Ray in red going Bersalieri, getting his first squad out, uh, as well as a crowd shoots in. So, uh, instant high, uh, high map control approaches, I guess. Uh, what do you think, Elf? Are you excited to see more Bersalieri? Oh man, you know me. When I'm going up against, you know, Dak, I just love to see these motherfuckers just sprinting towards me <laughs> at Mach 1 to just delete me. It's great. Man, I don't know if you remember this, Shark, but do you remember when sappers were everywhere in the early game? Like, when you would go against Brits and they were, like, indestructible, and as soon as they got close to, like, your grand squad, they'd just, like, be, like, evaporated from the plane of existence? They, they still are very strong, especially with... Uh, the armor at one CP upgrade for cheaper reinforcements uh, for the sappers. So uh, I expect, you know, Orange Pest here, he's got a section command post out. He's not building anything with it yet. He wants to use these sappers for map control and keep them confined to the short range engagements like you were talking about. Um, yeah. You know, Dak is extremely susceptible to manpower bleed, right? Their upgrades are, require it. So. Um, but it, I got a little glimpse of Ray's uh, micro. He, he went to grab. The pioneers told him to engage the uh, sappers, but I guess he had sandbags selected, so he almost threw down a line, weird ass line of sandbags. But oh no! But this is oh. so. This is this is interesting. So he's got one squad of Bersalieri capping up the south side of the map, and then the Krod shits yeah. in, uh, and his second squad of Bersalieri on the north side. Now, the uh, crowd shoots in, whipping itself around. I feel like it's already got a speed boost because he knows he's playing for Ray. Yeah, and I, I, I remember whenever I played uh, the other day, I found out that you can't reverse with the motorcycle, and I found it the hard way. I'm, like, mashing the R button. I'm like, hey, um, excuse me, why are you not moving? I still do it sometimes just out of force of habit. Yeah. Uh, Dingo Man, dingoes now for are everywhere, too. Yeah. yeah. Dingo, Dingo now for Orange Pest. So the changes they made to the Dingo make it good at hunting down stuff like the Karad Schutzen, but a little bit less abusive at hunting down uh, infantry squads on retreat. Um, gotcha. so some magic with uh, the burst multiplier and accuracy. Because accuracy doesn't really affect vehicles as much. They're much larger targets. All right, uh -huh. it's going to be a third squad of Bersalieri for Ray. So we're not going to see a mixed build. He is the number one ranked DAC player, so I'm going to go ahead and assume he knows what he's doing. Really? I mean, I mean, I, I'm not one to like cramp a play a style, but where are the snares? That's that's all I got to say. Where are the snares? My guess is they're going to come in the form of a Panzer Jaeger mechanized group at around the seven minute mark. OK. Uh, I mean, I guess, you know, British aren't really heavy in the in the armor section anyway, early game. Yeah. So sappers force off Bursal area on the south side of the map doing they take a lot of damage. We don't drop any models. Uh, Orange Pest now getting an infantry section out. So he at least has one snare capable unit on the field, but he's got a tech for it. Oh, the dingo oh, finds oh. a Oh, oh Blaine with fire there, bud, bro. You better go kiss your wife after that one. You see how close that was? Oh Literally, my goodness. Crowd shoots and smoking. Oh, it looks like sappers are uh, taking back control of the south side of the map here um, in the absence of the bursas. Yeah, with the bursas, Ray's had slightly better than average map control. Mm -hmm. But you can see he's already getting a med truck out because he's taken so much damage. Uh, and he's actually, he's already done the, the bolster. So he'll have six man Bersalieri squads now. Pretty early to get that Gary. first CP. I wonder what his game plan is because Bursas don't scale too, too well late game anyway. Since, you know, other squads just have a lot more like, you know, versatility and stuff like that. But I think it actually works well with the sappers because they also don't scale super well in infantry You're combat right. terms. So see in he a heavy sapper armored. start. Yeah, he did go armored in the British side as well. So it makes sense why he'd go so many sappers. Obviously, he's going to probably get these crusaders out to try and, you know, bully and manpower bleed. That's what my thought is. The crusaders are super strong right now, especially with the two pounder 
Uh, it still has good penetration against uh, the lighter vehicles. And then it just runs over infantry. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to see a second Panzer Pioneer out for Ray. What's his plan with that? One one for Minesweep, one for the Flamethrower? That's normally what you see, but he hasn't upgraded the Flamethrower on anything yet. And he's really trying to get this crowd shift into Vet 1, because that'll really start to turn some of these infantry engagements. Now, Orange Best has his platoon command post up and is getting his own healing. Here we go. Here's Vet 1. Oh, and now, is Dingo that the artillery? artillery. I think it's the Dingo artillery. It might be a, uh, a bluff. It looks like it was. Nope, never mind. It wasn't a bluff. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> you said I'm also a compulsive liar. It was it was not a bluff. The response. I said recon on that. artillery. I meant the uh, the recon uh, package upgrade from the from the section command posts or the sections. You know you you know what I mean. The yeah, recce upgrade. That's it, what I meant. It functions the same way as that dingo already. Right. It comes in from the base howitzer, but it's just so slow. Well, it really right, is. <sighs> Krod shoots it already on the opposite side of the map. Tapping up. Oh, Dingo could be in trouble here. Fortunately, the Pioneers, they put their sweeper away, but they can't get the knockout blow. Dang, man. Just with the skin of their teeth. Yeah. Look at this. Ray oh, is going to He's gonna take great map control here. Although he is behind on VPs, and Orange Pest still maintains control of two of them. Now we're seeing the fire support elements from Ray. So I guess the question is, you know, do you go... LEIG or do you go Panzer Jaegers? He doesn't know this. I'm would... thinking the Flak Frilling though, to be honest. Not to cut you off, sorry, but the Flak Frilling would be so good against these sappers because they don't really have an answer for it. The only thing he could really get on the field right away is a is a boy section. Mm -hmm. No, you're you're right there. I'm just thinking with the uh the half track call in that he gets every seven minutes. You gotcha. wanna use that because it's so so efficient from a manpower perspective. And he doesn't right. know this, but Orange Pest has just invested into the infantry training. He might notice if he starts to see that all of these infantry units have, uh, you know, one veterancy star now. But yeah. that that fuel investment means that we're probably not going to see stewards. And Sections find a mine right before the minesweepers get there. <laughs> they sure do. And Ray has actually taken over and gotten a triple cap on. Oh my gosh. Oh, uh, Dingo Pretty calls crazy the, here. The Dingo. Oh, wow. It's very close to going down. Just keeping it there, just playing with fire, man. Yeah. Oh, oh back it up. No, don't go forward. Oh. I'm literally spamming the <laughs> click button right now. Please, for the love of God. More dingo already coming Whoa. in. Oh, what this thing's doing? done. Oh, that had smoke. to be a mistake, right? Had to. Meanwhile, double sapper on the opposite side, plus the flamethrower. That's a potent combination as well, because now really the Bristol yeah. can't hop into cover. And now a Humber on the field. And this is, I'm pretty sure as soon as Ray sees this, we're going to see Panzer Jaeger half track. Oh, these Panzer Pioneers. Crouch has been trying to help oh. out, but it's not going to be oh, enough. Goodbye. Gun down. Good night. Oh. I believe it was the British who said fuck about and learn what for. <laughs> Oh, and the crotch shoots and smoked by the Humber. Nice, oh, aggressive geez. push. And just like that, there's the Panzer half track, but too late to save the Vet 1 crotch shoots. Oh, uh, look at this. So this is something that I need to do more of. He, I, he prioritized the 10 plus fuel capping it, and he's going to connect it later. That way he doesn't have to, you know, cap it later on whenever there's a uh, soldiers defending it. That kind of stuff I need to learn how to do, because I just cap you know, whatever's closest to my next territory without prioritizing what kind of resource it is. Yeah, and at the very least, oh man. Oh, oh Humber no! almost gets around the site blocker, but not quite. Sappers, sappers may go down too, especially with the half track here. Wow, big pickup. Now, uh, so wow. one squad of sappers gone. <laughs> Orange Fest says Humber randomly deciding to stop. Yeah, that's... Just a little salty. Just a little bit. Oh, it's so frustrating when the the units don't do what you're asking them to do. The pathing, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, to your point, even just denying that fuel to Ray is helpful for Orange Pest. 
Yeah, this, man, the flamethrower combo is so potent. Ever since that buff, right? The flame, uh, flames do more damage to uh, units in cover, right? Yep. Yeah, the flames are, the flame meta is powerful right now. But just the combination, you've got these infantry sections behind it. And so the Bristolari are damned if they're in cover and damned if they're not, right? Exactly, yeah. It's uh, veterancy level one that the sections get the bonus for being in cover, the accuracy bonus, right? Yes. Yeah, accuracy bonus, accuracy and, I think, out of cover. and I think it's, uh, is it that and fire rate too as well? 15% uh, accuracy against targets out of cover is what it's showing. Gotcha, okay. Maybe I'm remembering the old Co2 bonuses. So, Ray, pretty successful push on the flanks here. Meanwhile, Orange Pest shoving his way up through the center. And what Ray doesn't know is the Crusader AA tank is about 30 seconds from hitting the field. But now that these Ursulieri have Bredas, they're just going to scale a little bit better. Great dodge with the sappers. Yeah, they eat a ton of damage. But they don't drop. Sapper is trying to take on an armored car with nothing more than that Ooga flame, Ooga flame. Now I guarantee you, <laughs> they throw a grenade at it, but it doesn't <laughs> doesn't do anything. Real life being in the back of a half track when a flamethrower hits it, probably not a super fun feeling. I'm not, man. I'm gonna be like cooked like a rotisserie chicken. Are you kidding mm -hmm. me? That's metal. Ouchie. <laughs> that grenade looked like one of my grenades whenever I throw it, and it goes like left field. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that was supposed to be useful. Well, but this has been really effective because Orange Pest went from 23 fuel per minute to 3. And it delayed this Crusader getting out by probably another 20 seconds. Meanwhile, you see a Pack 38 on the way and an ISG for Ray. I wonder, I'm sorry, the LEIG. I wonder if he's going to actually drop that LEIG once he sees his Crusader. Well contended. <laughs> Huge map control advantage here for Ray over down here in the south. Definitely yeah. having a huge hold on this south VP or north VP, I guess you should say. Yeah, surprise, it's a Crusader. Another. That is gonna be a huge tool for him, but he didn't he needs to not throw that away like he did the Humber. This is gonna be a great tool for getting rid of the manpower and keeping it manageable. Yeah, and he really needs to punish any overextension by Ray as well with his infantry. Now you see he's being pretty conservative with it. And he does have a nice massive infantry section that he can use to push, right? What he wants to do is, he knows Ray's not a dummy. He knows there are Panzer on the field. He's about to find this oh, pack 38. Oh, hello. There it is, yep. At least the Bursas don't have a snare. Oh, That's man. That's exactly what I'm talking about. One snare there, and it would have been crippled in the middle of the map, just waiting to be slurped up by an anti-tank gun. Yeah. He's got two sappers on the field, so repairs will happen quickly. But like we were talking about, he just needs to use those sections to keep an eye on that pack 38 and then use the Crusader on the flanks to, to shape the engagements the way he wants. All right, oh. it looks like the both team weapons are setting up in the middle. Yeah, grenade package on the way. Oh, so Ray went through with the uh, LEIG. I mean, it is just crazy powerful. One shell from that will take, will literally half health all of your units in a whole squad if they're bunched up. Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Crippling it. <laughs> These bursts finally drop a model to the Crusader. Sappers on the flank. Some minor engagement here in the center as well. Oh, yeah, Bursillary forced away. The Panzer Jaeger and the Pack 38 reface to deal with the potential threat from the Crusader. The sappers are going to drive. Oh, now. Oh, but they get out of there. Yeah, Bursley area in a good spot to bleed them. So the Crusader is going to back out away no via the side block. Crazy. Yeah, really for either side. Alright, first Bren pops for this infantry section. And now Orange Pest is going to get a mortar. Oh, man, that ISG. There's so much damage. You see that? Yeah. You see that, right? Like, it's not just me who gets absolutely, like, thunder slapped by this in all of my games. Yeah. This thing is, like, a menace to society. When it's well it's microed, so which I guarantee yeah. you, Ray knows what he's doing, microing it. 
Uh, just like Hunter Dak, I don't know if you've seen any of his games and his team games. He has like three of these bastards just like rolling around in a pack and he'll just delete uh, a US Rifleman squad with them. I believe it. The fourth squad of Bersalieri now on the field. Oh, nice dodge of the rifle grenade right back into green cover. There's so much going on. I don't even know where to look like so many engagements are happening separately. This is like some high level gameplay for sure. Sure is. So we got yeah, the Crusaders on the flank here, and I, I think Orange Best is doing a really good job keeping an eye on where this Pack 38 is. But the Burst is also framing exactly with his Sappers as well. Sappers do find the mine, but better the better the Sappers find it rather than the Crusader. Yeah. Yeah. The right now, the unupgraded infantry sections kind of an even fight with the Bursas and the uh, the Bredas. But the LEIG kind of turning those engagements, even with the mortar on the field, it just doesn't have the same punch that the LEIG does. So Orange Best tapping up here on the south side as well, uh, trying to force off these uh, these Panzer Pioneer squads at range. In the meantime, in the south, the Crusader is trying to push and find these Bursa squads, you know, harassing the side VP. Yeah, and he's doing a great job keeping the Crusader mobile. And limiting the mobility advantage of the burst layer and also inflicting a little bit of manpower bleed. Oh, nice oh, block. Find the house. Yes. Oh. A little bit of air on that one. You saw that? No. What did I miss? It hopped up. Uh, it, it after it went over the hedgerows. The crusader oh. caught some air. This is those new physics updates. Oh, using the veterancy ability on it increase the rate of fire. Six pounder coming out now. Ironically, Ray, he's floating 250 fuel, but hasn't built his tier four yet. I don't know if that's an oversight or if he's just waiting to respond to something. Cause I, for me, it'd be an oversight. I do that all the time. Well, so with these high level players, it's generally deliberate. They don't, they prioritize engagements and army composition over teching. So it's not like Co2, everything was a rush to tech as fast as possible. In this game, it can be beneficial, right? Like he just saw, he got a second pack 38 out using the mechanized group there. And so I think he w he wants to have the right army first and then he figures he can always tech later. Like, of course, now he's getting his tier four out. I don't see many DAC players also keep their med truck at base. Usually they roll it around with their units to keep reinforcing on the front. I think, you know, one, this map is very shallow and wide, True. so that can be dangerous, right? You, you, the Crusader finds it, especially with the recent nerfs. A single AT gunshot is enough to kill the med truck now. So it's a little bit risky to roll it around, but yeah, in team games, you definitely see that. Oh, nice salvo from the Pack 38. Crusader's going to stay behind the site blocker here. Pack 38's going to move up, I probably for an attack ground. Like Bursa splitting up from their three man blob, three squad blob to uh, half cap the south location and then uh, obviously have a presence in the, in the middle VP as well. Yeah, Ray is going hunting for this Crusader. Uh, you saw the Panzerjäger half track roll out, but the Crusader backed up for some repairs. <clears throat> what is Orange Best spending his munitions on? I know there's the one uh, Bren section. It's got to be the grenades and the crusader uh veteran ability i know isn't cheap yeah i wonder if he's been putting down mines that we haven't caught yet but man it is really hard to deal with the map presence created by these bursalieri oh crusader finds the pinsjager half track ray doesn't see it right away that half track it's is gone. smoked All in the wild, the middle v uh, in the middle VP uh, infantry section tangling with the uh, with the yeah Bursalieri infantry squad section in a great motor. position, and that Bursalieri squad's going down. I think Ray gets a, a shot off through the the copse of trees there, but not enough. Oh man, this infantry section could knock out these Panzerjägers on retreat. Oh, they uh, were they think better of it. Yeah, they were focused on that AT gun. Oh, that's what happened. Ray disconnected for 10 seconds. That makes sense because his use just went dead. <laughs> Orange Pest is kind of calling the BS on it a little bit. <laughs> no, I, to I totally believe it. Up, 
Uh, it's unfortunate, uh, but you're also not going to complain uh, <laughs> when the when RNG Jesus gives you 10 seconds of free uh, free damage. Yeah, just to have your way with your opponent for 10 seconds is pretty crazy, especially in Ko. Yeah. I mean, you know, time to kill has been crazily adjusted to where everything is very, very fragile. Yeah. It's funny, to, to quote Orange Pass, right? If you're playing as Dak and you're not winning the KD game, you can't win. And right now, Orange Pass is almost, is like 1.6 KD over Ray. So I wonder if Ray can bring this back. It, um, now, losing that uh, Bersolari squad doesn't help the KD, but still. So Orange Pass has finally got his tier 4 out now. What does he use his fuel on? I guess I, I missed that. Well, so 80 went to the Crusader. Uh, another 80 went to the two training upgrades, right? The infantry training, armor vehicle training. Yeah, yeah. And then now 110 uh, to the tier four. And he also... Oh, Ray I was talking more about Ray, because Ray is still floating the 200, but I saw it went down a little bit, but no, no major vehicle. So did he tech? Did he do the armored reserves? That's the only thing I can think of. See. Yes, he did. Gotcha. So it looks like we're gonna see a tiger then. It's it's possible, right? He knows the Black Prince is gonna be available to Orange Pest. Now Orange Pest doing team weapon training. So right now his only team weapons are a mortar and an AT gun. Must be some big brain play to um, prepare for the future. So the the thing is with the Brit training is not only does it add you know raw veterancy, but it always comes with an actual like across the board bonus. You know for the infantry it's perceived accuracy and and their own accuracy when firing, right? So oh, the Cru guards. Crusader AA tank doing a base inspection here, and there is oh. nothing available. Oh, Panzer Jaeger's there on goes the way. The in. Oh. oh, dancing around the hedgerow. <laughs> yep, another uh, Panzer half track takes a bunch of damage. Pack 38's trying to adjust, but now infantry show up to support, and the Crusader is going to get away, it looks like. Unfortunately, he's still on prioritized vehicles, otherwise, it might have been able to catch these pioneers on retreat. Oh, cheeky rifle grenade, but only knocks out one model in the Pack 38. I think that's an interesting play from Orange Pest. Like, you gotta appreciate the aggression. Man, Ray is floating. A t is he going straight for a tiger? There's no way, right? I mean, he could build it in about 30 seconds here if that's what he wants to do. Yeah. He's got the fuel and he's about to have the manpower. Yeah. Oh, mortars find the uh, the pack, pack guns here. Yeah, those Brens will do decent damage to that half track as well. Yep. Okay, so that's it. So we're There's we got the tiger. the tiger, and now the other question is, will we see a tiger and a black prince go toe to toe? And we're gonna see how uh, Orange Pest here responds to the tiger. I mean, you can hear that. <laughs> you can hear this beast of a machine from across the map. You know what it's coming. Yeah, and only one AT gun and a foot guard section. So, well. Oh, so he hasn't gone for the Black Prince. He's gone for Churchill production. Interesting. Which, I mean, has the armor, but obviously not the, uh, not the gun the... capability to pierce. Yeah, not the penetration, right? So. All right, Tiger's on the field First now. First shot. Orange, I saw it. It immediately starts to unlock 17-pounder. Immediate reaction. <laughs> That's crazy. This map could be, it could be a good map for the 17-pounder. I mean, you set it up in the middle, it can see half of the map anyway, since you were saying it's so shallow. I mean, it's range is crazy as it is. Yeah, the problem is going to be that LEIG. Yeah, Crusader? he needs to find an answer for that. Oh, man. So much bleed now. I mean, he's doing exactly what I said he needed to. He's using the Crusader to, like, whittle down the manpower and really get these squads off the field and reinforcing rather than impacting the map. 
Yeah, what's nuts is we are 25 minutes in. VPs are almost dead even. And... Oh. Oh. Oh, that first shot whiffs. Lucky for the Crusader. It's already got a fair amount of damage done to it. Looks like he's trying to cap with his Bryn infantry section. I don't know if I like that play. Wouldn't it be uh, more uh, advantageous to cap with like an engineer squad, say? It's just to have something a little bit less combat efficient off the field. I, I think so. I mean, in theory, you're right. But I think at this point, it's probably more about what unit is closer. Now, <laughs> a sapper squad with a minesweeper would have been useful there. Yeah. But Orange Pest in a good spot. He's got a slight advantage in munitions income, and he's got two of the three VPs. Looks like we got a large queue of mines here. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to be able to get them down before uh, Orange Pest sees them. Ooh, LEIG, huge hit on the sappers. The tiger going to take a shot. Oh, Knocks out three of them. That's nasty. Dude, that gun is unfair. Well, and the tiger knocked out that whole hedgerow. So opening up, getting away from the sight blockers. Recon artillery comes in on the AT guns. Well, some outside the circle hits. Panzerjäger's down to a single relic. model. And here's the 17 pounder in the middle of the map. I wonder... And, and those, uh, those Panzer Pioneer squads were able to get pretty much every single mine off, man. I swear they got they got those soft hands to be able to throw them bitches down so quick. <laughs> that is a ton of mines. I don't like that the tiger's sitting on it right now, but... It makes me nervous. Yeah. Little engagement here between Bursalier and Infantry Section. But a closer... Infantry yeah, Bursalier are going to win that. Orange Fest, he's got the triple cap, but you met... Yeah, Ray's about to take part of that back. Like a lot of call of consolidation here for Orange Pest in the uh, in the base. You know, moving his infantry out to try and see and find where they're going to be most advantageous for their strategies. I mean, when dealing with the tiger, like what is the best place? Scouting for the infantry. I mean, scouting for the uh, the anti tank, right? With your infantry, it's just pushing it forward, trying to find the tiger. No. Yeah, and I would these last two infantry sections that don't have upgrades. I would consider putting. Boom! There's the first shot. I would consider putting a recce package on them for the flares because that is just so yeah. powerful. Yeah, yeah. Crusader forces off Bursalier that are capping. 17 pounder gets one shot in on the tiger, but it backs up out of range. Foot guards here on the top, gonna push off these uh these purses that take the uh the victory point. Yeah. yeah. LEIG starts to harass the 17 pounder, so Orange Pass is actually gonna pick it up and tow it. Commander, we have artillery on standby. But Orange Pass gonna maintain the triple cap oh. here. Well, he was until the sappers almost got knocked out. It just gets deleted by this go fuck yourself gun. <laughs> I mean, the tiger, it's like the A10 Warthog. They built it around the gun. Oh, that's, that is such a cool thing. That's cheeky. The mortar smoke in front of the tiger to keep it from uh, being able to counter any of the infantry units moving around. I that like is that. some high level play right there. Wow. I never utilize a smoke ability on mortars and that is a huge that is a huge advantage right there to be able to, you know, take a, such a big member of their defense off the table for a few seconds is huge. Yeah. Yeah, so the nice thing, you know, the mortar smoke and regular barrages are not Oh, that ham and bomb. The burst they are gonna get away, as will the foot guards. They're on separate cooldowns, so you can fairly easily, like, you can rotate uh, HE and smoke barrages and keep your mortar moving. It's just a micro attack. Crusader goes to support these Bursalieri, or, but, I'm sorry, the infantry section is about to find the Tiger. Oh man, almost half of the armor gone in the first shot. Tiger's gonna get a what second a, one. What a terrifying experience just finding yeah. a Tiger. Well, the nice thing is with the armored reserves, you know, shortly Ray can get a Panzer IV out too, which is also going to benefit Here's the Churchill. Him. Yeah. But Churchill is, it can tank some of the shots from the Tiger. Maybe the plan is to use a Churchill to spot the Tiger and then get the 17 pounder up. Oh, back to utility oh truck up, please. God. 17 pounder will at least get one shot off. There we go. Oh. 
Churchill, no match for the Tiger one-on-one. -on -one. These Panzer Pioneers are ballsy as hell to just be throwing mines down while these two tanks are duking it out, man. Oh, Ray doesn't care. Oh, another good hit onto the Tiger. Oh, now he's attacked grounding, trying to find it in the fog of war. He misses, but he does force the Tiger to back up. Orange Best going to maintain the VP advantage here. And Ray down, ticking down to below 75. But that LEIG is a menace. You see the mortar and the 17 pad are constantly relocating. And if Ray can knock out this uh, 15 CWT truck, that 17 pounder will be stuck. And stranded, yeah. Really easily to be taken out. God, this is so cheeky though. Look oh. at this. Oh, 17 pounder up. Oh. Just oh, doing a drive-by setup just to throw one shell at the tiger. Oh, man. look crazy. at this. Recon already at the right time. Force that infantry back to keep it away from the 17-pounder. Uh, well, and it's going to force all everything to clear out. And if he can spot this IS or this LEIG, it'll do a ton of damage before. Yeah, oh, here it is. There it is. It's not going to move in time. Oh, oh it sets, sets off a mine. mine. LEIG cleared. The main threat to the 17-pounder is gone now. Sure, sure, hiding to find these pack 30s. Oh. Yeah. At least one shot just bounces. At least the Churchill can take a couple of shots. Oh, Brasilieri squad taking a ton of damage and they don't see it. But the Churchill won't get a follow-up shot. Oh, another mine. What's been set off by going a mortar. back up the middle? Gonna find this crusader here on the VP. <laughs> Look at this hold down anti-tank gun. Oh! Oh, the in place. But it, the yeah. tiger's still bouncing nose shots as well. Leig recruit. Oh my gosh! Sixty percent of the health on that footguard squad just gone. Yeah, only the 17-pounder is going to reliably penetrate, but man, the sound of that thing going off from the rear. Churchill on its way back out. Crusader in dire need of repairs. Oh, now the Crusader's going to need some repair time, too. On the flank, Brasileri tangling with Bren sections. That's not going to go their way. They're going to get eventually forced off. Oh, Looks like no. he's capping up the other side as well with the uh, infantry sections, but these uh, Persis oh. close range are going to be a Holy little cow. Look at this arty cover. Can Orange Best get that 17-pounder oh. out? Oh, he just barely gets it out in time. Holy cow, man. That is crazy how that thing was screwing. It was like, the Triple Vet Sapper Squad gets away, and now Ray on the offense using the artillery cover to cover his advance. Here comes the Tiger. Back ground through the bush. Oh, man. Yeah, 17 pounder up in the base now. Wow, look at those hits. VP's even right now because neither side able to cap the southern VP. Ray owns the middle. Tiger back on repair. 17 pounder taking shots in the fog of war, but not going to get a hit. Yeah, Orange Best able to hold the North VP, and it looks like he's going to try to contest the South VP. He's got to keep the VP pressure on. It's definitely hurting for Ray as well. I mean, you gotta you gotta wonder what makes these DAC players so ferocious and angry all the time. Man, it's got to be all the <laughs> sand in their socks. It's got to be. <laughs> Especially the Italians, right? <laughs> okay, we didn't sign up for this. Why are we in Africa? <laughs> all of a sudden, they're getting angry tea drinkers thrown at them left and right. <laughs> What's next for Ray? He's got tons of fuel. I I feel like I would want a P4. Does he have the population for that? He's already at 83. 83? Maybe not. I, I could be able to check that. Let's see. P3. Yeah, he needs 21 for that because it comes in with an assault group with a uh, yeah, assault infantry deer section squad. as well. Yeah, yeah, the assault grenadiers. Yeah, he could always sacrifice his like, Panzerjägers to the gods. 
to the relic gods. Yeah. Classic They're... sent straight to the enemy to find some population count. Yeah. Oh, nice hit from the LEIG. So Burst is going to take the North VP back after that. Yeah, and Orange Pest is pop capped as well. Oh, versus this Churchill, rounds. man. We were we were questioning the decision making for the Churchill, but it is deleting these versus. Yeah, it's been a, a great counter to this infantry and team weapon heavy play. There we go. Panzer four on the field with the assault grenadiers. So he must have lost enough Bursillary models to afford it from a uh, pop perspective. Oh no. Oh, the Churchill Churchill in trouble. Two anti tank guns and the tiger. Yeah, unfortunately the AT guns aren't gonna auto target if they gotta attack through ground. Oh, Tiger eats a 17 pound around. God, it's just enough to force it back. And the Dang! Oh. And now Recky already coming in. Another hit. It's probably the sight from the Recky already. The P4 though gonna find the Crusader here. Crusader knocked out. Desperately holding on to these VPs here in the south. The sappers are holding strong against these assault grenadiers, but I mean they're gonna get pushed off here pretty soon. Yeah, if the second no, yeah, if the Versailles get involved, the sappers are truly done. Foot guards on the way over. Oh, the sappers are Yeah, they gotta it. get out. 17 pounder with an aggressive setup in the middle. LEIG Clear almost the pack 38. LEIG almost knocked that out. Where'd the pack 38 go down? Uh south. Uh, cleared it with the uh, infantry section here on the on the north side here near the uh, the, the fuel. Gotcha. I see it now. Flanking the Panzer IV. Oh, there goes the There's snare. There's a sticky bomb. Foot guards, the foot could, guards come could probably in. finish it off. Oh, dude, this is such an intense game. This actually could go either way here. And this infantry section could go down as well. Oh, oh no, the mine! Oh, no, dude, it hurts. It hurts so much. I hate that. The P4 is going to get away, but the 17-pounder is about to get cleared. 15 CWT truck knocked out. Churchill's coming up to support, but that won't do it. Oh, I missed that. Pa it looks like Pack 38 is coming up now to potentially knock out the 17-pounder. <laughs> Motor's trying to desperately cap this. <laughs> First off, oh, yeah. he might clear the 17 pounder here. I think he's going to be able to do it with the pack 38. Yep, yeah, one more shot. No, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> one more shot now. Um, <laughs> yeah, pack or 17 pounder gone. Looks like he's getting out of Matilda, is that? That's a Crusader. Besties? Crusader 2. Because he's lost a lot of anti MC firepower with the uh, Crusader AA tank gone. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Oh, man, this tiger pushed all the way up. No 17 pounder to counter base it. Inspection. <laughs> and he's just going to take a shot at the section command post to remind Orange Fest that he's still here. <laughs> oh, lucky pens for the freak for the six pounder anti tank on two direct front frontal facing pens is crazy. Yeah. Crusader hunt for sections chilling. Oh, sorry to cut you off. Go no, for no, it. you're good. The Crusader is trying to secure the southern VP, and then we've got infantry sections fighting against Bursillieri on the north side. Oh man, that Churchill's got to get out of there. That tiger just too powerful. Looks like another six pounder is coming out for Orange Pest as well to help try and deal with this. I feel like you have to. You need two, and you need them spread out enough that all one is always going to get a side armor shot. Oh, Pack 38 here to support the Panzerjägers against the Crusader, and it's forced to back up. Actually in danger of going down here, but he eats too many more shots. Now the foot guards can do a fair amount with these Panzerjägers, but Versailles are going to challenge them. They're already at half health. Yeah, those, uh... Foot guards desperately holding on. Trying to keep this, uh... Not VP. helping. Yeah. Nope. Oh wow, they, they win the fight, Bursillieri forced off. So they're gonna hold it. Orange Pest trying to assemble some sort of strength here in the center. Oh my god. Just deletes the vet three. Here comes the smoke barrage again. The attack ground whiffs. Oh, he needs some support to uh, support these anti-tank guns here on the flank. Yeah, he's get flanked by the infantry. He's got him on the flank, but the tigers oh wow, even the side armor bounces. Oh my gosh. There we go. Now we're getting about 50% penetration on the side armor. 
Churchill's in place. Center VP secure for Orange Pass. Ray's got the north and the south. Orange Pass finally not cap bound. I mean, I don't. What do you do here? The Crusader got knocked out. Or maybe it he has been a wild game. No, he refitted. He refitted. That's what happened. He was like, "Yeah, this I was isn't doing anything." I don't see a corpse. Uh, he's going for a second Churchill, which I think makes sense. It's the only thing with enough armor to kind of stand and tank shots from this tiger. Although this may, yeah, it's got to back up before it goes down. Tiger is at triple oh, bet. Good flank. The six pounder. Oh, and now the artillery oh, cover. Hurts. Oh no. There goes the anti tank gun. Yeah. The second one coming out of the base, but it's going right into that artillery cover zone. Oh! Infantry section capped the top VP. Uh, he's back on the bleed now. But not for long. And actually, it looks like shortly Ray will have a triple cap. Infantry section is going to challenge this one, and they'll win this fight. So maybe Orange Pass can at least hold on to the south VP here. But it's like parking the tiger right on the center VP to make sure that no infantry can, can cap it. That's how to do it. And one thing to note, yeah. this artillery cover from the Italian Combined Arms Commander, it requires sight, right? It doesn't come with an airplane. So it's very powerful, but you have to provide it sight. So even though that Churchill just rolled through, that's why it's not getting shot at. Oh, man. Ray with only 28 VPs left. But... If anyone's going to get triple cap off, it's Ray. And with 100 VPs on his end, Orange Pest, under a triple cap, he's got about a minute and a half before All they... Alright, Churchill about to find this, the north VP here. Yeah. Oh, there's the, there's the opening volley. Nice push on the Panzer Jaegers. Tiger sees it and starts to back up. So a Churchill on either flank. Oh. The sapper is getting eviscerated by this tiger. Oh my goodness. Yeah. They pushed the pack 38 off, but yeah, you're right. They got to get out. But Churchill on the north actually pushed off the Panzer IV as well with the, uh, with the uh, engine crit. I love this approach because he's just got to keep the VP pressure on. So a Churchill supported by infantry on both flanks. But this, this Churchill now moving into the center. Oh, it takes a... A big hit from the tiger. Oh, you're so slow, Churchill, please. Oh, this thing is done with the P4 and the tiger on its flank. Oh, it's cutting it off too. And Orange Best. Oh, I think it's pussyfooting a little bit though. But or he did, he succeeded in forcing Orange Pest off of that flank. And oh, now- Churchill on the flank here with the Bursas. Yeah, here we go, push it into the center. But the infantry section takes too many casualties. Oh my goodness, there's so much going on across the map I know. here. I don't know what to look at. <laughs> I'm bouncing back and forth in the center. So Ray's gonna be able to hold on to that center VP. Orange Pass down to 60 VPs. Sapper's frantically repairing the Churchill on the north side. He needs it to get repaired so he can push off this Panzer IV. Tiger getting repaired as well, sitting between the two VPs that Ray intends to hold. Ray's going to try to put pressure. Oh man, he might get the triple cap because this two-man Bren section is not going to be able to force off the Bersalieri. He's going to need to do something here fast. His VPs aren't like they used to. He's not at 100 anymore. Yeah, and, and Ray knows he can take fire from this infantry section just to cap. Orange Pest he needs pushing. to focus this assault grant squad so the so the uh, infantry section can get to the VP. It's not going to happen. Orange Pest has to give up the North VP entirely. He's going to capture the center, and he's going to give up the south. Oh well, man, this has happened three times now. He he stops two victory points, but he always Ray always has one, so he's still bleeding a little bit. Yep. Well, uh, the Pack 38 in the base is able to push that Churchill base inspection back. Oh, here comes the tiger. Gonna find the six pounder. And now VP's actually even. Ray has pulled it back. Oh, uh, here comes oh, the tiger in the P4. Oh, just just not quite. No. And actually it forces that P4 back. 
Oh, there it is. Tiger knocks it out. The burst is just shooting at the infantry while just chilling behind the Churchill. <laughs> yeah. They're prepared to die for the fatherland, I guess. Artillery oh. cover coming in. That's got to be the nail in the coffin. It's got to. He can't leave his base now. He's, he's his base locking him with the artillery cover so that the triple cap is going to happen no matter what oh. now. One section goes down. Sapper's on the southern VP, but it's not going to be enough. Looks like the, uh, the relic buff wasn't enough. The 10 seconds wasn't enough for Orange Pest. Yeah. Oh, man. What a game. Wow. I'm giddy. That was crazy. <laughs> what a comeback. Okay. So, starting out with Ray, his build order. Right? He goes Panzer Pioneers, immediately locks in the Italian Combined Arms Battle Group. Gets his first squad of Bursillary out on the way to three. Also gets a crowd chosen. That is a ton of capping power and a ton of speed right out the gate. Uh, uses that really well to get early fuel control. Um, light support company, two and a half ton med truck. It's a second Panzer Pioneer out. Uh, she uses pretty effectively, mainly to lay mines. You don't really see the flamer minesweeper combo like you uh, have in other matches. Um, from there, fire support elements, veteran squad leaders. Remember, he gets the bolster via the battle group, but the veteran squad leaders still provide an experience bonus, received accuracy penalty, etc. Uh, Panzer Jaeger mechanized group when the Humber hits the field, then he gets a pack 38 and an LAIG. That LAIG just does work for him. Uh, fourth Bursillary, then uh, another pack 38 via the mechanized group. He likes keeping the Panzer Jaegers in the half track. One of them gets knocked out, but then he still has that one on the field. Uh, then he goes into his tier four straight into armored reserves and the tiger he's floating a ton of fuel um it's an aggressive choice right but it ends up working out for him because of the way orange pest built out his uh his army there uh, replaces the lost med truck uh text the vehicle survival package late in the game he gets the p4 assault group right with the uh, the assault grenadiers uh and late in the game text the emergency repair kits for the adhp and the auto healing um, obviously for the battle group goes Bristolieri, Bolster, and Breda Light Machine Guns. And on the opposite side, unlocks some of the Caro, doesn't use either one of them, but gets the artillery cover. If you're not using the Italian armor, that artillery cover is super helpful. Um, and like we pointed out in the cast, you need to provide it sight, but it does a lot of damage and it's very responsive, in particular compared to the recon already that the Brits have. Now going through Orange Pest, he locks in the heavy armor battle group right away. Uh, goes three sappers, section command post, dingo, uh, and then two infantry sections. So, lot again, like really aggressive infantry heavy build early, using the sappers for utility and to spread out the map and win those close range engagements. Um, builds his platoon command post, but ends up teching the field infirmary in the infantry training. Makes sense based on how much he has on the field. From there he goes Humber, which actually works really well for him. Ends up getting two more infantry sections out. The best thing, when he calls in that Crusader AA tank, it does a lot of work for him um, throughout the game until it finally gets knocked out. But that is a great counter to the Bursillary. Uh, Text the grenade package. It's a mortar out, which is a great idea. It just doesn't hit the same as the LEIG. Um, he has one six pounder out, and then he gets the armored vehicle training. Even though he only has the Crusader on the field, it just provides several boosts to uh, you know reload, acceleration, etc. Um, so those those Brit trainings are really, really helpful. Um, company command post, uh, foot guards out, right? And then team weapon training, which is interesting considering he has one AT gun and one mortar. But then he unlocks a 17-pounder AT gun, gets one of those on the field, and the micro on that is just fantastic. We'll talk about it later. Um, ends up getting a, a Churchill, right? Because he unlocks the Churchill production rather than the Black Prince. Um, yeah, I don't know if the Black Prince would have changed this for him. Now the Churchills are good, but by the t when the Tiger hits the field, they just don't have the AT punch that you need. Uh, light vehicle training, which really just supports his 15 CWT that's towing around that AT gun. He gets a Crusader out, but he ends up refitting it uh, for another six pounder and another Churchill at the end of the game. Unfortunately, the Churchill is just too slow to keep up with the Bersillieri moving around the map. Uh, he ends up losing this one. Um, for the battle group, obviously he unlocks the, the re, uh, reduced reinforce and deployment cost for the sappers, Crusader A tank, and the Churchill production. And then on the opposite side, the only thing he really uses there is the recon artillery. All right, so back here with Elf and Bro, what did you learn today? 
Oh my gosh, Shark. You have no idea. I have just been like raving through this with my head right now. Like all the high level gameplay that we just saw in this 45 minute masterpiece of a game has been crazy. One of the points that I wanted to talk to you about was how he was able to use like utilize his Panzer Pioneers mid fight to place like a stupid amount of mines, mm -hmm. which ended up getting him a squad wipe anyway. Like just that alone is so crazy to me. What do you think about it? Yeah, so Ray being aggressive with the mine placement, really helpful. He was obviously floating a lot of munitions. He didn't have too many muni sinks, right? There's the artillery cover, uh, but his income, the income on that map is actually pretty high for munitions. Um, but then, like, you actually pointed this out. He was laying mines down while a tank engagement was going on. And so even if Orange Pest knows, like, oh, I see a mine there, he's still got to, like, go back with a sweeper to sweep it because you're not going to stop to shoot at the Pioneers when there's a tiger in front of you that you got to deal with. Um, so pretty cheeky, but effective play. And really what that did is that limited uh, Orange Pest's ability to push. Is, I'm thinking in particular like the north central lane, right in between the north and center VPs. That's where he threw so many of those mines and it made it so Orange Pest really couldn't push towards that cutoff. So really, uh, really smart play. You got to admire the micro to be able to do it uh, mid mid combat. but pretty impressive um yeah, yeah. honestly uh, another point that i saw that orange pest was doing was not only whenever ray was saving all those like resources and me and you were both just like getting all like excited like oh tiger time baby tiger mm -hmm. time and then he finally has the tiger out first volley comes out what was it like two seconds later you immediately see the tech in the 17 pounder <laughs> like that is crazy how fast those fingers are man like immediately getting the 17 pounder out and just in general, a 17 pounder period, like in a 1v1, a 17 pounder to me would lead to my demise because there ain't no way in hell I'm going to be able to micro that at the level that Orange Pest was doing. I mean, every time he set that thing up, it got at least two or three shots off towards the tiger, got it to half health. If then, then he would pack it up and move it somewhere else so he couldn't get bombarded. I mean, like textbook, like he was on top of it. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, that is exactly like the high level play and counterplay, right? Because as long as that LEIG is on the field, that 17 pounder can't be static. Um, and so you've got Ray on one hand, microwing and adjusting his barrages constantly to try to hunt that thing down. Um, and then you got Orange Pest, who's keeping his 15 CWT right next to it and immediately towing and setting it up, towing and setting it up. He did a couple uh, maneuvers where he put it on the tiger's flank. Not that the 17 pounder really struggles to penetrate from the front, but like, Man, really effective. Um, my only critique, like I said, I think two of those infantry sections could have used the recce package because then you can pop flares to spot for that 17 pounder. Um, he was able to clear the LEIG once, but not destroy it. So it got recruited. And then I think Ray figured it out. The key to defeating the 17 pounder is knocking out the 15 CWT because once you can't relocate the 17 pounder, then you cannot you can clear it with infantry, artillery, whatever, right? And once that happened, then you kill it with the pack 38. And now the only real like anti-tiger worth AT that uh that Orange Pest has on the field, the 17 pounder, it's gone. Two six pounders, just not the same, right? Um, it's not. I mean, it, you saw how many times it was bouncing at like that tiger was literally just style walking all over orange pests troops like literally just flaunting its ass you know well, what i'm talking about but but he didn't but ray kept did a phenomenal job of not letting the tiger get flanked right there were yeah. a couple side armor hits like later on one six pounder on the, on the side of it but for the most part the tiger's armor was always facing the enemy and orange pest could never get into a situation where he could really put it at risk so yeah, really impressive I, I, micro for the tiger I completely agree with that. And like another point that I wanted to point out just about the build in general that Ray went for, mm -hmm. I remember me telling you how I was really confused on why he was going just a full bursa for like his main line with no snares or no utility or anything like that. But what I didn't, what I failed to realize is that he was not even using the bursas to counteract the vehicle play that Orange, po Orange Pest was like putting out. It really was just for map presence, speed of capture, and just really forcing off infantry and winning infantry engagements. 
to keep these little like you know one-offs where you just send an infantry section to cap a vp and the burst is chilling in green cover you know what i mean yeah that's what he went for all the vehicles that orange pest were uh, even had on the field were all completely tied up with the tiger because that's a huge problem so mm -hmm. that's why he went bursts for the main line he didn't need the snares the tiger is the snare you know what i mean <laughs> yeah well and and to your point right so with four bursts of squads on the field He's using them to contest the flanks and right get that VP control. If one squad of them gets away, another one runs over there. The passive sprint so powerful, and Famonville, it's like a shallow, wide map, right? So having the yeah. speed to get to the flanks versus Orange Pass, his choices were the infantry sections, and at the end of the game, the Churchills, super slow, right? So you get over there, and then you take a VP, but then you're flanked. Or the tigers on your kind of retreat route and so now you got to back up and you just can't maneuver those churchills like the crusader had the speed but not the armor the the aa tank when that thing died uh i mean i i kind of debate i wonder if you just replace it because that was the one thing countering the bursts because it was fast enough to move across the map and do damage yeah. to them and then you focus everything else on keeping the tiger at bay but man, like that's tough. Um, two churches. Yeah, it's a hard yeah. call. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's a hard call to do. Like, do you keep the Crusader AA specifically for the sole reason of the infantry? I mean, because he didn't even have any skill planes. It was the mm -hmm. it was an artillery. It wasn't even a skill plane. So yeah. it's not even like you could argue that he had the Crusader on for stopping that from happening. My point is, I'm actually still on the map, and I'm trying to see how much a Crusader is population cap wise, and I'm failing to be able to do so because <laughs> i want to see how much of a strain on his population and manpower something like that would happen because like what he did have two churchills at one point because he needed it i mean having those two big bodies on the field to try and block and you know really control where the tiger is able to go mm -hmm. respectively is 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 an artwork in its own and honestly i i i applaud both players for the level of micro they were gonna they were able to do with their armies that kind of stuff i mean just between somebody who's new at the game, somebody who's intermediate, and then these players, I feel like it's three separate games you're playing, even though it's both, all three of them are called Company of Heroes 3. Yeah, no, they, they did a phenomenal job. To answer your question, the pop cap on a Crusader is 10, the population gotcha. cost, right? Um, yeah, I, like, what you know, watching the cast, and obviously you're, you're working your own camera when we watch this, but like, at one point I was bouncing back between two different firefights, back and forth, just to try to capture everything. Um, even in like in one V ones, that's not always the case. Sometimes there's like a running engagement across the map and things shift, but almost never two or three simultaneous engagements. So really, really impressive across the board. Uh, Ray hats off to you, dude. I cannot believe you brought this back. Um, and there's no, there's no really even room to say like, well, if orange pest had another two minutes, like, no, nah, man, this game was firmly on the downhill, uh, for the Brits here. So uh well done um man elf you got any parting shots bro no nah, man i mean just like you know me every time you bring me on here man you got some like tomfoolery you're showing me for a game <laughs> that i'm like what is going on it is so crazy to see the different types of strategies that high level players employ and like just like general limit testing of like what units can do and what their limitations are like just being able like a 17 pounder and a 1v1 man that's all i gotta keep <laughs> saying like how many people do you know could pull that out of their ass you know what i mean well uh i mean orange pest gave it a shot but ray Heck still yeah. won it in the end it's crazy uh orange pest shout out dude I, he's helped me with so many videos and other things so uh also well played love to see the 17 pounder micro elf Thank you very much. Uh, love to have you on, man. Glad to have you back. And uh, that's going to do it for us here, guys. We'll see y'all in the next one.